Hello friends. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Eguru for you. Please like, subscribe, and press bell icon to get notified my educational videos. Hello, hello friends. In this video, protoplast culture, which is one of the important topics of tissue culture, will be discussed. The contents are 1. Protoplast isolation 2. Protoplast viability and density 3. Culture techniques 4. Somatic hybridization 5. Identification and selection of hybrid cells 6. Chromosome number in somatic hybrids 7. Problems and limitations of somatic hybridization Now, protoplast isolation In protoplast culture First we need to isolate protoplast from plant cell, which can be performed by two methods. 1. Mechanical method. 2. Enzymatic method. Mechanical method was first performed by J. von Klerker in the year 1892. In this method, plant cell is kept in a hypertonic solution, as a result of which cell becomes plasmalized and all the contents of cell are drawn towards center of the cell. Now, the cell wall is cut with knife and protoplast is released. Protoplast is deplasmolized to regain the original shape. But this method is not preferred because of several disadvantages. It is limited to certain tissues which have large vacuolated cells. 1. Yield of the protoplast is very low. 2. Tedious and laborious method. 3. Viability of protoplast is low. Now, second method is enzymatic isolation method which was first started by Edward C. Cocking in the year 1960. In this method, two enzymes are used. One enzyme, pectinase, is used to degrade middle lamella which separates the cells from a tissue. Then, another enzyme, cellulase, degrades the cell wall and protoplasts are released. It can be performed in two ways. 1. One step or simultaneous method, the tissue sample is exposed to both enzymes at the same time. 2. Two step or sequential method, first tissue is treated with pectinase, followed by cellulase to release protoplasts. Enzymatic method has advantages over mechanical method. 1. It can be used for variety of tissues and organs. 2. Protoplasts are obtained readily. 3. Cells remain intact and not injured during the isolation process. Most frequently used staining method for assessing protoplast viability are 1. Flechetate, FDA, staining method 2. Phenosafranine staining 3. Calcofla white, CFW, staining 4. Exclusion of Evans blue dye by intact membranes 5. Observations on cyclosis or protoplast streaming as measure of active metabolism. 6. Variation of protoplast size with osmotic changes. 7. Oxygen uptake measured by an oxygen electrode which indicates respiratory mechanism. 8. Photosynthetic studies. Now, the culture techniques involve. 1. Agar culture, agarose is most frequently used to solidify protoplast culture media. Here, protoplasts remain in the same position and immobilized, proper plating efficiency can be obtained but the medium change can be done only after visible clay formation. 2. Liquid culture, which can further be divided into liquid droplet method and hanging droplet method. This method is generally preferred in most cases during early developmental stages of protoplasts. Because it allows easy dilution and transfer, protoplasts easily get divided in liquid media. Osmotic pressure of the medium can be regulated and can be effectively reduced during further growth of protoplasts. In liquid droplet culture, suspending protoplasts in liquid culture media are placed on petri dishes in the form of droplet, the cultured protoplasts clump together at the center of droplets. The liquid medium can be changed at regular interval. In hanging droplet method, 
culture of protoplasts can be done in an inverted droplet on the inner surface of the lid of Petri dish. A very small number of protoplasts can be cultured in this way. A thin layer of liquid medium is kept in the Petri dish to keep the environment inside the Petri dish humid. 3. Feed a layer. In many cases, it is desirable to reduce the plating density, then a feeder layer consisting of X-irradiated non-dividing but living protoplasts are plated in agar medium and on this layer the isolated protoplasts are plated in a thin layer of liquid medium. Here, the living but non-dividing protoplasts provide necessary growth requirement for the isolated less number of protoplasts. 4. Co-culturing. Sometimes to induce division. The newly isolated protoplast suspension is mixed with a reliable fast-growing protoplast suspension and mixed protoplasts are plated. Some growth factors help. Somatic hybridization is defined as the in vitro fusion of isolated protoplasts to form a hybrid cell and its subsequent development to form a hybrid plant. It involves two methods of protoplast fusion. One, spontaneous fusion. In this method, the adjacent protoplasts and enzyme mixture have tendency to fuse together to form homocarion that is having same type of nucleus. 2. Induced fusion. The freshly isolated protoplasts can be induced to undergo fusion, with the help of a range of fusogens like, sodium nitrate, calcium ions at high pH, polyethylene glycol and electrofusion. The mechanism of protoplast fusion involves three main phases. 1. Agglutination or adhesion. 2. Plasma membrane fusion at localized sites. 3. Formation of heterokaryon. Identification and selection of hybrid cells. During the process of protoplasts fusion there is a possibility of formation of homocaryons, heterokaryons and unfused parental protoplasts. Hence, proper selection of hybrid protoplasts or cells is utmost important for the improvement. Different method can be used to select fusion products of protoplasts. 1. Chlorophyll deficiency complementation. 2. Oxidroph complementation. 3. Complementation of resistance markers. 4. Use of metabolic inhibitors. 5 use of visual characterization which involves a use of morphologically distinct cells b use of petal protoplast with leaf protoplast and petal and cell culture protoplasts can be readily distinguished c fluorescent labeling d the growth pattern of hybrid callus is different from either parental line e hybrid callus is often more vigorous than parental callus F. Differences in the morphology of callus. 6. Compound selection system. Verification and characterization of somatic hybrids. Somatic hybrids can be verified and characterized by following methods. 1. Morphological analysis. 2. Ice enzyme analysis. 3. Chromosomal analysis. 4. Molecular analysis. 5. Genetic analysis. Variability in chromosome number of hybrids could be due to following reasons. 1. Multiple fusions give a higher chromosome number. 2. Fusion of more than two protoplasts with subsequent mitotic irregularities. 3. In PEG and electro-induced fusions, about one-third of fusion products result from fusion among more than two protoplasts. 4. Asymmetric hybrids result from fusion of protoplasts isolated from actively dividing tissue of one parent and quiescent tissue of the other parent. 5. Unequal rates of DNA replication in two fusing partners may also give asymmetric hybrids. 6. Somaclinal variation in cultured cells used for protoplast isolation may also lead to variation in chromosome number. Potential of somatic hybridization. 1. Production of novel interspecific and intergeneric crosses between plants that are difficult or impossible to hybridize conventionally. It overcomes sexual incompatibility barriers. 2. Somatic hybridization for gene transfer. 2a. 
disease resistance. 2b, abiotic stress resistance. 2c, quality character. 2d, cytoplasmic male sterility. 3, production of autotetraploids. 4, protoplasts of sexually sterile, haploid, triploid, aneuploid, etc. Plants can be fused to produce fertile diploids and polyploids. 5. Hybridization becomes possible between plants that are still in the juvenile phase. 6. Production of heterozygous lines within a single species that normally could only be propagated by vegetative means. 7. Somatic cell fusion is useful in the study of cytoplasmic genes and their activities. 8. Production of unique nucleocytoplasmic combinations. Cyprids are the cells or plants containing nucleus of one species but cytoplasm from both the parental species. The various approaches to achieve this type of fusion are 1. By application of lethal dosage of X or gamma irradiation to one parental protoplast population. 2. By treatment with iode host tape to metabolically inactivate the protoplast. 3. Fusion of normal protoplasts with inucleated protoplasts. 4. Fusion of a normal protoplast with another in which nuclear division is suppressed. Problems and limitations of somatic hybridization. The successful agricultural application of somatic hybridization is dependent on overcoming several limitations. One application of protoplast methodology requires efficient plant regeneration from protolasts. Two lack of an efficient selection method for fused product. Three end product after somatic hybridization are often unbalanced, sterile, misformed, and unstable, and are therefore not viable. Four development of chimeric calluses in place of hybrids. 5. Somatic hybridization of two diploids leads to the formation of an amphidiploids. 6. Regeneration products after somatic hybridization are often variable due to somaclonal variation. 7. It is never certain that a particular characteristics will be expressed after somatic hybridization. 8. The genetic stability during protoplast culture is poor. 9. To achieve successful integration into a breeding program, somatic hybrids must be capable of sexual reproduction. 10. To transfer useful genes from a wild species to a cultivated crop, it is necessary to achieve intergeneric recombination or chromosome substitution between parental genomes.